Well, good morning and welcome to our daily service. Really glad that you've joined at the head of this fresh week. Why isn't God more obvious? I don't know if that question has been put to you before. It was put to me quite recently by a woman who had studied philosophy in her university days and had earnestly been seeking after the truth. Why isn't he more obvious? If he's there, if your God is there, why does he need to display himself more obviously? It's a great question. And this week in our daily services, we're looking at Psalm 19, which speaks to how God has made himself clear if we are open to it. It speaks of his witness in his world how what he's made in creation speaks of him and his witness in his written word. Psalm 19 speaks of both. But before we dig in and look closer at this question, why don't we begin with some, some words from Psalm 136. I'll lead off and would you join in on those parts on the screen that say all. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. Together, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures forever who made the great lights, his love endures forever, the sun to govern the day, his love endures forever, the moon and stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. Let's pray. Father, amidst all the muck and mess of this world, the things which we know don't please you, we look to you thank you that you haven't left yourself without witness in this world that you've made, that it points to the fact that your love is indeed steadfast and sure amidst the storms that we face in this world. Please now, God, would you speak to us by your Holy Spirit and point us to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, there we were, a high school friend and I, and we were riding over the mountain range that runs north to south through Vancouver Island with our touring bicycles and the panniers that were packed with all our camping gear. We were looking for the place to stay for the night at the very peak of the mountain range at that evening when we were crossing the highest height. The map said the campsite's there. It wasn't. <laughs> The sun was setting, it was getting dark, we had to figure out where we'd stay, and so we pulled up off the highway to an old bit of an old road and set up tent there. It was scary. I wonder what creatures are around in these woods. But what I remember most is what we saw. As it got dark, no ambient light from any nearby city, not a lamppost for miles, on that cold, cloudless night, imagine the stars that we saw. It took our breath away. I'm sure you've seen a sight like that. Or maybe you've stood at the edge of a sea and you've looked out over the vast expanse of that ocean as the sun set and the glories that painted the sky. And maybe you too were breathless like I was then. Why isn't God more obvious. Well, in this portion of Psalm 19 that we're reading today, just listen to part of God's answer to that very good question. Psalm 19, beginning at verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun, 
It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at the one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. Psalmist David would have written at a time when many worshipped the sun, as some do today, when many uh, looked to the stars for guidance, as some still do today, when they treated these glorious hosts as if they were in themselves divine. But the Bible's view is radically different. The glory that we see in the stars and in the sun, which we're told here runs its course from morning to night, which bursts forth almost like a bridegroom uh, bursting out of his tent with all the wedding party and all the guests giving their hurrah, and then runs its course to the other end of the day and sets. And the night comes and the stars come out one by one and the moon governs the evening. The glory of these bodies isn't the glory of themselves they speak to the glory of the one who made them god and even though the bible acknowledges that they're not animate they don't speak uh, they have no speech they use no words no sound is heard from them nonetheless they do speak their voice goes out into all the earth their words to the end of the world it's as if Day after day, night by night, they're speaking. They pour forth speech, they reveal knowledge, they declare the glory of God. He's here. He's glorious. He's eternal. And so the Apostle Paul in Romans 1 verses 18 through 20 says that human beings, no matter where they are across this globe, are without excuse because God has shown himself by what he has made. And yet he goes on to say that we suppress the truth. We push it down, we push it away. God, why don't you show yourself? I can't see you. God, why don't you speak louder? I can't hear you. We do, we say. And so why don't we, as we begin a time of prayer, begin with a time of confession where we acknowledge that we have ignored God and what he's said. We have been stubborn and at times have resisted his will. Let's pray. Aloud together. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have turned against you, ignoring you and resisting your will for our lives. We have been stubborn and rebellious, but you are merciful and kind. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us, and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you and to please you in every way. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer of general thanksgiving. Again together. Almighty God and merciful Father, we give you humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We praise you for creating and sustaining us and for all the blessings of this life, but above all for your amazing love in redeeming the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, giving us grace and the hope of glory. Give us such a sense of all your goodness that we may be truly thankful and may praise you not only with our lips, but in our lives, by serving you in holy and righteous ways, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And in the stillness, why don't we ask God in the quietness of our own heart to make us truly open to the way he speaks to us in his wor world and in his written word. And why don't we bring to heart and mind now those for whom we're most concerned and mention them to God.
God, we worship you as the God who speaks. Thank you that you've given witness to yourself in the world you have made. We humble ourselves before you and praise you, our great creator. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's sing together now. We're going to respond in song now as we sing together about God's great faithfulness. Please do join with us. Again, thanks so much for joining us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>